Hey guys, welcome back to an episode of Spiral the Dragon. Last episode we did Breeze Harbor, Harbor, and we also did the Metro City Speedway. Today we're going to be going to Zephyr, which is an interesting level. <laughs> it is very, very unique. And we've actually had references to this in the last episode on Breeze Harbor. But uh, Zephyr is a very unique level. And it's, and it's pretty much a war field. Our war, is that right, right word? A war field? A warm, I don't know, a battlefield? There's a war pretty much, and it's very unique, it's very annoying, and there's a lot of, uh, of orbs in this level which are difficult. Like, they're not, they're not and hard, it's just more annoying than anything. But as you can see, the the big blob men are getting attacked by birds. Yeah. Okay, Spyro. Looks like we got us a bit of a situation here. The Breeze Builders have got us pinned down, and we've been waiting for a volunteer to blow up their munitions building. Looks like you're it. So, if you remember, the Breeze Builders are the guys from Breeze Harbor. Yeah, that's, that's who they are. We actually never saw the, these, like, troops, though, until recently. Like, if, if you remember on that level, the, um... Oh, it's, it is kind of weird if you think about it. Like, we're actually getting involved with war crimes here. Also, that, I'm pretty sure this is the first level where there's four orbs, yeah. And this one really makes this level pretty big. Because it's not just, like, three orbs or two orbs like there have been previously. This is the first level in the game where there's four orbs. And this is probably one of the more longer levels in the game, if not the longest. And that's why I really don't like this level, because it feels like you don't really achieve that much. Like, yeah, it's it's, it's a decently large level, don't get me wrong, but it's it's a bit too long in my opinion. Like, it really is. It really is really, really long. So, uh, anyways, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to do here, mainly with this cannon. Let's talk to the guy. Dang cannon just ain't working for me. You think you can blast that bird, soldier? Jump up here and give it a try! Will do, young sir. I'm pretty sure we don't actually have to, like, attack that bird. Actually, yeah, we do. Just to actually open up the gate. So, cannons can also open up doors, which you'll see here. Boom, there's one door. Let's blow that up as well, the thing up there, the little gem. Did we get it? Oh, we just missed it. Okay, one lower. Did we get it? One lower. There we go, okay. So, the cannons are a very big part of this level, like... As you can see, we're having to blow doors up and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I like this concept, but this level's just huge. And another thing I don't like about this song is that there's, a, there's a song out there called uh, Zephyr by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I think I mentioned this in my first playthrough of this game. I don't really like that song. And I know it's a really bad reason to think this, but for the longest time, I didn't like this level because of that song. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous. Also, there was only five gems in that thing. And if any gems fell down, yes, five has. It's always nice to check there because sometimes it does fall down. But yeah, for some reason, I don't like this level just because of that one song. It sounds really, really stupid, though. Like, I feel like such an idiot for thinking that, but yeah, I just feel like, yeah, meh. So, if you remember, I think I mentioned this in the last episode, that there was a, that in the Breeze Harbor, there was creating some kind of, um, like, flying machine to actually get to Zephyr. I now kind of see why, because there's a lot of troops here, and a lot of them can't really fly, like the whole chicks here. Yeah, they can't really fly. But they are pretty weak if you think about it, you can just literally just charge into them. Uh, like most levels, this level is really tiny and small. But there is so much to it, like, there's so many orbs and stuff, like, I'm pretty sure there's literally two missions in this game, and they're right next to each other. And they're both down here. And we're gonna be getting, we're gonna encounter the first person over here right in one second. Which is right over here, it's little Bo Peep. What up? My name is little Bo Peep, and I have lost my cowlicks. With these battles going on all the time, they keep running away. Can you help me get them back into my pen? Can do. So we need to find the five cowlets, which cowlets are a mixture of giraffes and elephants. So to do this, you can do this in three ways. One is just ram them, two is flame them, and then the third way we'll get introduced to in a little while. Uh, but we need to get five of them in there. It's not too difficult. They, they will be just all over the place. So enjoy rounding up the cowlets, because these cows, a goddamn annoying. Like, the thing is, the cows actually have their own AI. So, as you can imagine, they like to do what they want. Like, this guy over here, he's, he's literally just doing what he wants. C come on, start messing me around here. Come on. Just, where's he got? Come on, get back here. So, uh, the cow looks, by the way, very annoying. And they can also walk off ledges. So, be aware of that. They can walk off ledges, which makes them very annoying and very hard to tame. Uh, but as you can see right now, we only need to get five, so it's not too bad. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm charging, it's just a bit faster, and it actually gets them where they want to be. Of course, you can have, like, a, a bit less control than when you would flame, flaming, but it just, you know it's going to get pushed straight in there. There's two of them. So, yeah, there is a total of five of them, and the cowlets, 
pretty interesting animals if you think about them. Like, they obviously went for like some kind of animal mixed with a giraffe. But why is it called a cow look? Cow look, that, that's with a K, not a T. A cow look. It's a very strange name. Very strange name. And for some reason, this is the only guy I can remember his actual, like, name in the game. And, like, you know what I mean? I, like, we never really found out what anyone else's name was. Like, ooh, super flamed over here as well. Like, we never really know anyone else's name. Well, I don't know them off by heart. So yeah, the fact that we actually know this guy's name is pretty interesting. Okay, this guy's from, is this guy really far from throwing bombs at us? Okay, let's just actually destroy these guys. Come on, mess around. So the third way to actually get the cow that's actually around is by using Super Flame. Super Flame works a bit different in this level. Like, you can actually use Super Flame on the cowlets. And that makes them really cool. So you, you'll see that there should be two cowlets down here if I remember right. Okay, there's one of them. Should be another one. Am I right? Yep, okay, here's the last two. So we can actually Super Flame these guys. And they literally go flying. They literally fly away from us. Boom. Like, it, they're just so cool. They are just so powerful and so energetic. I really love them. Like, I really do. They're just so good at what they do. Okay, let's get another one. Boom. Okay, I want to get these guys up here as fast as I can. No, no, no. Get up there. It, it's literally trapped on the thing. Oh, oh, balls, balls. Quick. Oh, no. So now what we need to do is we need to go back and get Super Flame. I was hoping we could get that done in one swoop, but, you know, it's fine. So one thing to be aware of is, it, is if you're in this level, you do need the climbability, obviously. Um, also, it looks like... Oh, wow, that is sneaky, that. Like, I don't know if you saw that. There's actually a 25 gem right at the top of the peak over over here. Oh, also, boom, let's actually get this started. Okay, I know where that is. That's right at the top. Uh, so if you remember, if we do set up a new checkpoint or anything, if we die, it will just go back to the original location of where it was. So just remember that. Just remember that. So, so let's actually get these cowlex back to where they need to be with their master. I don't understand how the cow looks got here, by the way. It's never really explained because I didn't know cow looks could, uh, uh, cow legs could actually climb ladders. I said cow legs then, you know, like the British YouTuber. But it's never really explained, like, how did they actually get up there? Because I never really understood that. I never understood that one bit. Ooh, there's four. And the last one over here. Let's go for a little swoop doop doop doop. And uh, this should give us our, our first orb of the level, which, to be honest, seven minutes for an orb, it is pretty long. Oh, get back here, come on. Stop messing me around. Boom. Okay. I, I, I know I just hit Bo Pete with it, but it's fine. Thanks, Spyro. Here's a little something, you know, for the effort. Okay, thank you very much. That's going to be our first orb of the level. Don't worry, this guy's going to have us an uh, another quest for us, so we can actually get a second orb from him, which is always good. So. There are two more cowlicks out there somewhere. But I haven't seen them in days. Okay, fine by me. So the two cow looks are pretty easy to find if you know what, you, what you're doing. By the way, they're both right down here. Uh, the thing is, you can bring the cow looks back in any order and you will not notice a difference. What light from yonder window breaks? That window up there, dummy. The professor said he was working on a way to help me get back with Juliet, but I haven't seen him in a long time. So yeah, we need to find the professor. That, that's the whole mission. But yes, as you can see, there's some kind of like Romeo and Juliet stuff going here. If you don't know the Shakespeare story, Romeo, Romeo is from one side of the family, Juliet's from another, and they're rival, and then a war against each other. And that's literally the entire plot of <laughs> those two, if you think about them. By the way, the cowlicks are right over here, I'm pretty sure. Are they right in over here? I hope I'm right. Uh, I don't think I'm right. I'm not right. Uh, Romeo and Juliet, I, I really like that they've actually recreated the story, and to be honest, it's probably a better story than Romeo and Juliet, I said it. Don't get me wrong, I do like Romeo and Juliet, and I I did watch it as a kid, um, the, the uh, what's it called? I'm pretty sure we can actually get up there, by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure I did watch like watch the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, and I have read the book. Yep, Daco the Trainer reads books. I actually do read books, by the way, if you're wondering. And it's not a bad book, oh my god, I have to remember this now, so we have to charge this guy across here. Okay, this is very difficult. Oh, balls. We have to make it so he doesn't actually jump into the pit. Because if he does, we're screwed. Okay, we need to actually charge him up over there. Okay. By the way, the, the guy can actually get in the way. There we go. If you're why I'm doing one cow at a time, I don't know. If I'm honest, I don't know why I'm just doing one cow at a time. Uh, that's one of them. Where's the other one? I'm pretty sure they're both in this area. Huh. Where's that last cowlet? I'm pretty sure it is around here. We'll just leave that one up there then for a second. Actually, have a quick scout around. It might be over here, actually. Yeah, he is. Also, there's a professor. So, we'll talk to the professor in a little bit. I want to get this quest first, done first, before we actually go and get another quest going, because there's no point in getting two quests at once. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of just makes things more complicated than what it has to be, so I'm going to kind of, like, hold off on that. 
So uh, let's talk about my life, why not? So if you don't know, in uh, right now in the UK, I'm actually working on my thesis. My good old, ooh, I'm sure that actually made it over there. Uh, my thesis for my my final year of university. If you don't know, I'm focusing on uh, marketing and the progression of digital marketing in a um, any real life situation. Which it sounds really complex, but it's really not. If you don't know, I'm really into um, like marketing. If you don't know, I did a full year working in marketing, and I, I really like it. If you're wondering, I more specialize into vi video marketing, obviously, just because of the whole um, me making videos on YouTube. Also, I got it wrong. Also, they can actually fall off the cliff. Ah, oh, nice to know. Uh, not full of cliffs. So yeah, I'm doing that and it's one of those things like it's really it's really interesting Don't get me wrong. I really like it, but it's really boring at the same time. It's like oh, I've got to I've got to go and study and uh, if you don't know on average uh, at universities they give you in the UK They give you 40 hours of teaching and then you have to do 160 hours of actual like writing essays and stuff And I I'm not a very academic person. I, I'm really not by the way. There's six. There's one more over here Tree to bring in I'm really that, that academic, to be honest. I'm more of a um, hands-on type of guy. I like to learn in the workplace. I don't like to just loiter for hours on end because I've got bad things to do in my time. I don't like to just be like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. You know, I like to be in there hands-on and getting stuff done. And I really don't like university for that reason. Well, I am impressed. You got all seven cowlicks for me. Here's a fair reward. So yeah, we got our second orb. But yeah, I don't understand like why university is like that. Because if you don't know, in the UK, we work a lot different to to how America works. In America, people, um, their parents pay for their degrees. In the UK, we pay for them and we have to get student loans. I know you can do that in America and stuff, but it's, it's more heard of in the UK. So that's what I normally do. I, I've took out a student loan and I'm actually paying for education and stuff. And if you don't know, I'm actually getting 50 grand in debt just to learn. How crazy is that? It is. What a professor. Spyro, my boy, I've got a magic bean, uh, I mean seed, for you in here somewhere. Uh, here it is. Why don't you plant it in the ground and see what grows? Okay. Aiming the seed by holding down the triangle button will make this easier. Oh, and if you ever need your seed back, just flame the plant and it will turn back into a seed again. That's good enough. So we're going to be using the seed to actually see Juliet. Oh, hey. Uh, but yeah, like, I'm spending so much money on actually getting a degree where... In my job title, my job role, and what I do, oh, balls, okay, I'm pretty sure we can make up there. Is there another seed we're missing? I think there might be another seed we're missing here. Because th this level's very weird. Okay, if we flame that, that's good, okay. Yeah, there is another one. So, I pointed this out earlier, you know, with the first cowlet. You can use these seeds to actually get things unlocked and stuff. And you you'll see that over here. So, we've actually got this one over here. And seeds can be used in many different ways in this level. You can actually kind of cheat a little bit and only do this with two seeds, but it's better to have more than one seed just to help you progress. Come and get up there, Spyro. And we're going to... Oh, for God's sake, I could have easily made it up there. We could have easily gotten that seed there. Boom. So, so yeah, I'm actually getting 50 grand in debt just for a degree, which I could do without getting, if I'm honest. Like, not not, not to say it's a waste of time, because it's not a waste of time, but it's just, in my opinion, a degree is not for me. It's really not. Like... I'm one of those, I'm more hands-on, I, like, I like to do stuff myself, I don't like people telling me, oh, it's fine, we'll, we'll just come back and put it in a second. I like to do things my own way, and I like to get stuff done myself. I don't like people telling me how we're right and stuff, because I'm very selfish. I'm honest, I'm very selfish like that, and um, in life right now, I'm kind of I'm kind of a bit more focused on like my growth as a person, like my experiences than anything else. And... It, right now in the UK, the big thing isn't anything to do with like, I'm pretty sure we can actually jump up there by the way if we time that right, no. I'm pretty sure we can, we can do like a double jump if we do the glitch, but I'm not going to do the glitch. Um, but but like, yeah, I, I just feel like with me, experience is more valuable, of course, like some degrees, especially in the UK, a lot more relevant than, what, than like experience, but for, for me, business and marketing and business and management and stuff, which I do, it's more, really, do I really have to do this type thing, you know what I mean? I know it sounds really stupid. By the way, if you do mess this up, you will have to go and read with all the puzzles. So, fair warning, do not miss and uh, don't put it in the hole because it sucks if you, if you do that. Because you can see they are, they are giving us a lot more seeds and uh, it is easy to mess this up. Okay, come on, get, get in over there, come on, got it. It is really easy to mess this up and it's easy to actually fall off as well. And if you do miss, miss it, it's just... You have to go all the way down the bottom just to get it again. It's just, it's not worth the effort. Okay, that was a bit stupid on my part. It's not worth the effort, you know. I'm honest, it's really not. Okay, there's another one right over here. Okay. One thing I like about this is the actual tracker 
for Spyro's um, eyesight, it's actually 100% legit. Like, it li literally never misses. So, as long as you actually get a decent shot, you're fine. Also, what are the chances that everyone who has orbs has something for you to do? Like, if you think about it, everybody who has orbs, you have to do something for them. Something, maybe a little, something, maybe big. Oh, oh my god, I, I almost cut myself there. What up, Professor? Well done, my boy! Here are two more seeds to get you the rest of the way. Oh, and take this with you if you don't mind. It's been cluttering up my pockets. Okay, and of course again, orb from the professor. But why is the professor got orbs? I don't understand because he's we're collecting the orbs for him. If you think about it, well, it's not for him. It's for us to get home. But it's just annoying, isn't it? It really is. So again, you can do this with one, one of them. But you know, it's nice to have two. So this is a bit more puzzly here, and you'll see why. So you, what I need to do is I need to get both of these in a set place. So what, what, there's two ways you can do this. You can either go all the way across and then just throw one when you get to the other side and then do the other one at the same time. Like, I'll explain it in a little bit. Okay, what I want to do is I actually want to throw this one up here. That way, when I... Do I really just throw it? Oh, thank God. Because if you throw this off the edge, you're screwed. I'm trying to throw it up there just because I can't be bothered picking it up again until later on. Oh, it's fine. I'll just do it the way I was, I was going to. That way would have been a bit faster, but, you know, I messed up the jump, so... So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up here, throw it up there, and get the other one and bring that up here. If you put this one in right now, like, you can't progress, you know. And that's why I think they give you an orb here, because this puzzle isn't hard, it's just more, you have to, like, use your brain a bit. And since I'm doing a university education, I'm pretty good at these kind of puzzles, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to lie. My degree's teaching me something, how to beat puzzles in Spyro, definitely. Let's throw that in there. Get that one set up, and let's actually go and get this one. And then this should lead us straight up to Juliet, which, to, to be honest, Juliet's voice really annoys me in this game. And you'll see why in a second, if I don't miss. I don't know why, like, Juliet's voice, meh. So also, uh, that camera angle was glitching a bit there. So let's throw this down here, and let's create a, a, create a little platform. And let's actually go and see Juliet. What up, Juliet? How are you doing? Romeo! Romeo! Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Oh, there's Romeo. You can have this. I don't need it anymore. Okay, we actually get our second orb. I find it funny how Juliet has got such a a masculine uh, a masculine voice. You don't really expect her to have it, but she, yeah, she's gonna be going down to Romeo now. The unfor um, what was it now? It's um, forbidden love. I was say unforbidden. Unfor uh, forbidden love where they could never be together, and then they're gonna die together now. Rip Romeo and Juliet. Rip them. So yeah, I'm spending the money very wisely in life right now. Um, like I mentioned in my tile, let's play, I'm actually saving up for... Um, by the way, we've got all the, all the things here so we can actually go up top now. I'm actually saving up for a lot of GameCube games. I'm actually getting really into GameCubes. And if you don't know, I own quite a few GameCube games to start with, but... Recently, I've been trying to expand my library of GameCube games just because... I want to get into collect collecting things. Like, a lot of my friends collect different things like money, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I want to get into collecting... GameCube games. I know it sounds really stupid and stuff, but can we actually get that from here? No. And I know it sounds really ridiculous and stuff, it's just I want to get a hobby and I feel like that would be a really cool one to actually do. Just like get, pick up game, games where you can. And uh, yeah, because I feel like game the GameCube is a, such a good console and it's one of those things that like, there's so many gems you can easily miss. Like, don't, don't get me wrong, like I played a lot of GameCube games, but so many games I haven't really ever played, such as uh, Pokemon XD and stuff, which I do want to do on this channel eventually. Uh, Pokemon XD, by the way, a really expensive game. Oh, for God's sake, get out of my way. Uh, it's a really expensive game for um, balls, man. Okay, come on, come on, bring it on. A really expensive game in the UK version, the PAL version. It is literally... It's about $80. 80 or $90, depending on exchange rates, exchange rates, which is expensive. I think it's actually $84 for a game for the PAL version, which is expensive. Same with Mario Sunshine, like, that is at least 50 bucks. And it's kind of crazy if you think about that, like, just because, like, if you don't know, um, regions are on different games, for example, like, the PAL region is the UK and Europe, and then there's the Australian one, which is AU, I think it is, and then there's NTSC, which is, no, I think Australian's PAL as well, yeah, I think Australian, Australia and, the, and Europe sell the same thing, which is PAL, and then I think it's, um, oh, for God's sake, no, 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 Ugh. and then there is, um, the NTSC version, which is the American version, which... Oh, and there's also the JP, which is the, the Japanese version, obviously. And, um, and yeah, the European version is, for some reason, well, the PAL version, which is the non-American version, 
is super expensive wherever you, you you try to buy it. Like, it was one of those things which didn't really sell well in the UK. The GameCube just flopped. So a lot of the games you buy for the GameCube, expensive as hell. And I don't like that. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, I love the GameCube and stuff. I just... Like, my collection's going to be really expensive to get. But don't get me wrong, when I do complete it... Oh god, don't fall off. It's going to be really expensive when I do fill it up. Like, it's going to be worth a lot of money. Like, like right now I just bought <laughs> XD Gale of Darkness brand new and... It, it, it's a good game, don't get me wrong, but I paid a lot for it, so I expect it to be, like, um, like, like, mint. Also, for some reason, he's got TNT in, his, in there and he didn't die. That makes zero sense. So, I'm wondering how many, um, gems are actually on now. I've had, a, I've had a bit of a rant today, you know, just like a general chat with you guys. Come on, let me get that thing now. Come on, give me it. There we go. I've had, I've had a massive chat with you guys. I haven't really been really that focused on the game, but it has been one of those, like, big, draining... Like, levels, I think, is effort. You know, with everything that's going on. I've actually missed something. Balls, we missed 20 gems. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like they're gonna be in with the main guy. And if they are, that's fantastic, because that's, like, one less job. By the way, there's no no skill points in Zephyr, which is... Oh my god, you almost got me there. Which is always good to us. By the way, there we go, all gems. Wow, what an explosion. It sure is a good thing I had my helmet on. Oh, yeah. Uh, the colonel wanted me to give this talisman to you if you got through the breeze builder defenses. Good job, soldier. Thank you very much. And we actually get the bomb from from Zephyr, which is a red bomb, which is it's pretty cool, isn't it? Like, but we have actually completed this level. As you can see, we've got everything here. We've got all the skill points since there wasn't any. And let's just actually head back. So uh, of course, the guy's gonna be giving him chicken feed, and uh, and yeah, enjoy. Here he goes. Here he goes. Oh, he's, he's going for it, he's going for it, boom. And uh, of course, you can't be a bit chicken feed and then the blobs are just gonna... <laughs> yep, it's gonna blow him up. <laughs> How brutal is that if you think about it? It literally has just blown his head off. <laughs> well, of course they couldn't show it because it's cartoon and antics, but he literally did just blow his head off. How brutal is that? Anyways, we have now completed another world. Let's see how many worlds we've got complete. Like, like how many have we got left? So we've got... We've got another four. Okay, that's fine. Plus, we've got to do the rest of the open world stuff. And we've got a speed, another speedway, because I'm pretty sure this is the only world where there's two speedways. So, I think we're going to head up top right now, because I, I feel like we've got quite a few more skill points to get in this world. I think, I think we've got um, another three more skill points to get. Or is it four? I think it might be four, actually. And, um, of course, to do that, we need to make sure that we've got everything set up. So, we're actually going to dive into this level next, which is, I think, Scorch. Yes, yeah, Scorch. Which reminds me a lot like uh, Earthbound, but like I said, I'll get into that in the next episode. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like. It'll be greatly appreciated. And I shall see you guys next time. We're going to head into Scorch. A very interesting level. It's kind of like the Arabian Nights. So, uh, get ready for that. See you guys then. Take care. Peace.